<laughs> but that, that, uh, you know, Cesar uh, would hardly ever say he did anything wrong, uh, but uh, the one thing he said, he, that mistake that he made with his first son, and it was his love of golf was one of the reasons, that, which he got from Richard, by the way. Uh, but, uh, uh, and Cesar said, I'll never make that mistake again. And so with his other two sons, uh, Paul and uh, Anthony, his two youngest sons, uh, he was much more uh, considerate, uh, much more attached to them, made sure that he uh, kept a relationship with his two youngest sons. Yeah. Do we have a question for Rosario and Gabriel? I feel like we haven't heard enough from them. Right here. Um, I feel like this could probably apply to all of you in general. I mean, thinking of my background, which is Australian, when I'm presented with these sorts of films that chronicle the lives of you know, very powerful and influential figures to you know, American culture and like American culture, I always find it fascinating to research these characters afterwards because it seems so many worlds away from what I'm used to. So. For you guys as actors and creators in general, how does it feel to know that this film might be you know, opening doors for more people to become educated on the, not only Chavez, but everything he stood for and how far you know, he's been able to make progress? Yeah. I know for me it feels remarkable to have the opportunity to do that. I've been able to do a few films over the years that have touched on social issues around homelessness or HIV AIDS or LGBTQI issues or um, multiple things over the years and so that's incredible that we get to do that with them that that's part that I don't just get to entertain but that I get to use that as a way to reach an audience that might not otherwise be looking to see a PSA or some sort you know and so I think that's the thing about film as well is that it's a, it, can, it can be a learning tool but it also it's an equalizer it's whether you're young or you're old you're watching it you can have that experience so I mean I definitely there's a there's a feeling for a film like this to go, I really hope that young people will watch this movie so they can understand the history behind this and they can be motivated perhaps to, to vote more or to, um, to, to be a part of the movement to make Cesar Chavez's birthday into a day of, of action, you know, um, or, or multiple things, you know, to kind of look into when they're seeing things about fair trade and fair wage and food justice and, and you know, um, as even the GMO conversation that's going on and going, and, you know, supporting local farmers and organic and all of these things that are part of our, becoming part of our everyday because of the work of people like you, Lotus, and, and Cesar, you know, I think it's a really remarkable opportunity, but then don't forget, like, all of the people are part of it. So, like, a friend of mine, Les, watched the film last night, and, you know, he's in his mid-40s, and, you know, he grew up next to a strawberry field and said every day he'd go to school and walk right by these farm workers and, and this whole field, and it never, he didn't know anything about Cesar Chavez. And he was ashamed, he literally, that's what he wrote to me, he said, I feel ashamed that I didn't know who this man was and what this work is and I'm gonna go and look him up now. And I'm so grateful that you invited me to come and see this movie, it was a great film, but I'm also grateful to know this, like this is important to know. And I think those are those things, like I mean again, you can't fit everything into the movie, but like when Cesar was doing his fast, he got a letter from Martin Luther King. You know, this was all happening at the same time of the, of the burgeoning of the feminist movement, of the civil rights movement, all of this stuff was going on, which is part of our vernacular, which is part of the history that a lot of us embrace and know about in America. But for someone like Cesar, who has a name and boulevards and streets and murals, there are a lot of people who don't know that history behind it. And it's an incredible opportunity to be a part of that storytelling, which is our most ancient tradition, oral history, and passing on our story generation to generation. It's remarkable to be a part of something that's gonna outlive all of us to continue to tell that story. Yeah, and, and to, to sort of pick up on her point, which was, uh, you know, and I have to admit myself, I wasn't, I wasn't as educated as I should have been about this man and his life, especially considering when I got the script and, and talked to uh, my family, because I talked to them a lot about sort of work that, that may potentially come my way, and my mother said, oh, well, you know, I canvassed for Cesar Chavez mm -hmm. when I was a college student in Stanford, and I said, no, mom, I did not know that. <laughs> and she's, like, she's like, so you know this man's story, you know you have to do this film. I said, well, I was thinking I wanted to do it anyway, but now, I mean, <laughs> so a whole other level to it. But I mean, there were, there were so many, I think, in the making of this movie, so many beautiful connections like that and so many beautiful coincidences that came about that, that really, you know, and I think to, to, to what you said, I mean, you hope when you make a movie like this that, that it creates a dialogue, you know, and, and as Diego said, that it, that it, a dialogue that extends past the theater, you know, um, in the process. So, uh, yeah, I mean, in, in an ideal world, you, you make a movie and, and people respond and, and, it, and it starts that dialogue again for people who didn't know. 
Yeah. I mean, and, and I figured it was fortuitous when we arrived here yesterday, and it was Cesar Chavez Boulevard, and there's yeah. a restaurant Chavez like a block away over there, and I thought, oh, just the, the stars are aligning. <laughs> <laughs> Great way right now. Yeah. I think we have you, time for one or two let, more questions. Let, let me just add uh, one, one thing, and uh, it's that we spent four years of our lives uh, doing this film. Imagine being telling a story you don't care about, you don't think it's necessary. That, like being here trying to defend it in front of you, I'll be drunk. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I don't give a shit. You know, that kind of thing. But no, it's not. I mean, I'm not going to waste four years of my life. I'm going to invest that in, in something that I hope will last and, and live forever, you know, that for my kids to know they're part of this for, for many. And uh, film, I think it's... Uh, a great thing that I was taught by people like Dolores is that the way to bring change is about people <coughs> connecting with other people. And, uh, and the, the, the great tool they used was telling their personal story face to face, you know? Mothers talking to mothers, uh, parents talking to parents, saying behind that grape it's the work of my seven-year-old, he cannot go to school, are you sure you're gonna feed in lunch break your kid with that grape? Mother said no. That's what we do with film. We go out there and we tell you personal stories, and uh, we try to be very specific about the, the story of, of a family or a character, but to raise awareness into topics that matter to us, to hopefully for you, you, you can go and get touched and inspired by a personal story, but then reflect on how that has to do with your life and how can, uh, I mean, where are you related to what you just saw, you know? And then it changes you somehow. So we're part of the same struggle, you know? Film has become a tool of change in many ways. <laughs> they didn't have this tool, but today you can put a video up and you can start sending messages to people, please help me share this video and share my, 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 my reality or my story with people. Uh, it's fi film is really something we're not using the way we should because the world would be a better place if we knew the power of film. Mm -hmm. Who has not had a question yet? We'll go here first. Hi, there's an officer from Austin representing El Mundo newspaper and others. Um, because we do have the topic of sacrifice and challenges and stuff, could each one of you perhaps say something? Because it was four years, of y'all's lives that went into it, maybe not specifically every single person, but could you all either mention a challenge or a sacrifice that you feel came out of this experience? Oof. <laughs> Just the one. I mean, I, I miss many things. I, 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 I miss many very important moments of, of my kids growing. Uh, my, my, my son and daughter went to Hermosillo for a weekend and uh, my son said, I love you, Dad, but this is too hot. I gotta <laughs> go. <laughs> and he left. And, uh, yeah. Uh, but you know what? None of our, well, at least none of the, the, the sacrifices I had to make made any sense compared to the sacrifices they made. And every day we were reminded on, we were telling a story that matters because this is about people that is actually really doing something today and that something that allows me to be here sitting in front of you guys and uh, that I was in, in Capitol Hill presenting the film and uh, there was very important people in powerful positions sitting in chairs there and suddenly I looked at them and I go like wow you're all here because of these people you know you all got that chair because of the fight of these people because they decided to take it really far to places where, where no one imagined they would. They surprised everyone. And now you have a chance to be there because of them. Uh, wow, this is a film that matters. So it's, it's about the sacrifice they made it. Okay. I would just say for me, it was just the only thing that was super hard for me. It was just my grandmother had passed the year before. And we were, as we were filming, we were coming up on her anniversary. And this was a film that I knew would have really meant a lot to her. She, she was really inspired by you. And she was, you know, she's the reason why I'm an activist. Because my grandmother, my great grandmother worked for the Ladies International Garment Workers Union. And so my grandmother used to march for labor rights for her mother and for herself and being a single mom of five children, which really influenced me wanting to play this role. 
And, you know, she took my mom to marches with her. And in turn, my mom took me marches with her. And so everything I do in my advocacy that I've been doing all my life has been because of that. And so this was something, a pinnacle for me in my career to be able to portray something like this and be a part of the storytelling of people like my grandmother and be able to tell her story. And it really means so much to me. There's a part in the film when you just so faces in the crowd and you go, these are people, these are individuals. And that just meant a lot to me because I knew so many of my family were those people. And it's a really big deal to tell those stories because my grandmother was a very unsung hero. She was a very strong, really powerful, amazing woman to me. But on paper, she was, you know, a single mom of five children who was a secretary, you know? So she doesn't necessarily rate to other people, but she was the world to me. We need to uh, wrap this up, but I did want to ask you, you, you. Oh, sorry, go ahead. I just want to say that in the film, we show uh, one farm worker who was killed, Juan de la Cruz. There were actually five people who were killed. And one of them was killed by the Kern County Sheriff's uh, just 48 hours before Juan de la Cruz was killed. So we had five people who gave up their lives. Uh, you saw beatings of farm workers in there. Yeah, that, that was really true. People got beaten up. Uh, we went to jail many, many times. We had so many people arrested. Even Dorothy Day, who was a Catholic worker, was arrested. You know, uh, and There were priests and nuns and farm workers and students. Uh, so the sacrifices were just enormous. And, and in, in the film, we get a, a picture of that. Uh, but the complete picture is, of course, so overwhelming of so many people that had to sacrifice for just you know, let's get some toilets in the fields. You know, let's get some drinking water for people. You know, let's give them the right to, to have a union. And, the, and there was all of this sacrifice that had to happen just so farmers could have a little bit of dignity. So the sacrifices, of course, were enormous, okay? And, uh, and I think that the film does bring that, you know, bring part of that so that people can understand uh, what people went through. And it's still going through for that matter. I did want to say, uh, is there a way that we can try to find a way to get this into some public schools? Because my mother was a school teacher, and I think that if there was a way we could get this into like the public school program to, to teach kids, that I think it would be a good way to maybe open some eyes to that as well. It's, it's, it's happening, and uh, there's many people. You know, you know a beautiful thing that the community is doing, and I send a message through you guys to everyone that, want, that wants to join. Uh, Latinos are in, in key positions today. They're making decisions. They, there's, there's many that are doing fantastic, and they, they're part of this, and this belongs to them. And uh, one uh, amazing thing has been happening is people have been calling to buy out theaters to give away to schools of their communities. Oh, yes. There's more than 500 uh, <coughs> screenings already that have been bought uh, for for people that just that want to share the story, uh, and it's it's happening, it's happening, and and I just hope it keeps growing. We have three weeks, and I urge you all, if you can help us, send the message. This film is out on the twenty eighth. If we want to send the message of, of 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 yeah of a community wanting to be represented in film, we have to do it that weekend. If we wait another one, it might be too late. It's the 28th, and, uh, and uh, it's important you guys help us. Uh, you know, today, obviously, we come to film festivals and we think everything is about us and everyone loves film, but then you go to the real world and there's so many distractions. Uh, even film, many times, works as a distraction, but there's a few that, uh, in fact, talk about things that matter. That can that that can make you a better person. That can inspire you. And uh, let's celebrate that cinema. And let's make sure it exists and we can be part of that. So please join us. Our thanks to Diego Luna, Dora, Dolores, Orca, Cesario, Dawson, Diego. Thank you very much. No, no.